Busy Media interviewing Jim Butcher, who is author of the Dresden File. Nope, I'm Jim Butcher. I'll be interviewing. <laughs> okay, I have, just want to say I finished reading uh, Proof and Guilty just a little while ago, and I have I have a real quick question before the serious interview. Justin's behind everything, isn't he? Justin's dead. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Very dead. D E D dead. Are you ever gonna change your answer, Dad? Dead. All right. What was your reaction when you heard that James Marsters, uh, better known as Spike from the Buffy and Angel series, was going to be the voice for uh, for your books? When I first heard that they, they confirmed it, I was on the phone and I pretty much jumped up and down and said, "Yay!" Uh, I did a Snoopy dance, um, <laughs> and, and then learned later that at, at my age, you really ought to stretch out before you do a Snoopy dance. <laughs> Do you like the way he's doing the voices and giving different personalities? Oh to yeah, everybody? yeah. He reads he reads it well. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, awesome. When um. What characters, if any, um, did you pull on from like personal people in your life? Like, for instance, is how close are Frost and Mouse to each other? Oh, uh, my dog Frost is exactly like like Mouse. If Frost was uh, huge and uh, and really secure, Frost is is far tinier, and uh, uh, he's uh, totally insecure, and uh, uh, he's paranoid about everything. Uh, uh, and he's soft and fuzzy and, and useless in a fight. But other than that, he and Mouse. Exactly the same? Same thing. All right. Oh, yeah. How do you flesh out a story? What's your writing process? Oh, um, normally uh, uh, I know where I want to... Uh, I, normally I can see what I want the, the story climax to be ahead of time. So I know more or less where I'm going. Uh, normally I have three or four things that I want to be sure I hit before I get to the story climax. Uh, and then there's usually there's a bunch of little moments that get thrown in that I want. To, oh, I want to make sure I get that moment in. You know, I want to make sure I get that uh, the, the the gay joke in between Harry and Thomas you know, because that's the only explanation that possibly makes any sense from an outside observer. Once I, I know all those things, then uh, uh, I'll, I'll also I'll have a general idea of what I want the plot to be, and I'll start figuring out what characters I need, uh, which of the ongoing cast will be best suited to actually showing up and helping. Uh, then I can, after that, I can, I can design any extra characters I need to get going and then start writing. Okay. Um, now, this January, the Dresden Files has made it to Sci-Fi Channel as a TV series. Did you get to visit the set and uh, take a look around? Yes, I did, in Toronto. Uh, uh, it, was, it was extremely interesting. Although I will say that the, uh, the movie business has got to be one of the most boring businesses to actually work in in the whole world. Because every time they film something, they, they have to film it, and then they film it again, and then they film it again. And then they move all the cameras around. Like three times, maybe. And then they film it again and again and again. Yeah, like three times, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, 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 and I, you know, I was there, I was there in set for like six hours, and I got to see them make about 45 seconds of movie. It's like, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine that. So it's, you know, it was really interesting to get to go and see. Everybody was really nice. Uh, I got to meet uh, several of the actors and uh, the, the crew and the producers and so on. And uh, they just seemed like a really great bunch. Awesome. Who, uh, who do you read when you're not writing? Oh, um, uh, well, actually, I, I, I have to read while I am writing uh, in order to, you know, to keep things going. I, I read all the time. Um, uh, Robert B. Parker is one of my favorite authors. Uh, I really love Glenn Cook's, uh, Glenn Cook's writing. Um, Lois Bujol. Uh, I still go back to the. Or I still go back to the classics. I go back and read uh, Tolkien and uh, the Belgarian David Eddings Belgarian. I, I go back and read uh, 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 Chronicles of Narnia and Lloyd Alexander's Friday books. I still go back to those. Uh, uh, I've loved a lot of the military SF that's out these days. Uh, uh, John Ringo, David Weber, uh, uh, E. E. Knight. Uh, I've had a I've had a good time uh, uh, reading all those authors, and I, I keep I keep and I keep looking for new authors as well. It's always great to find somebody. The, uh, uh, Naomi Novik's Temeraire series, for example, is totally wonderful. I've been really enjoyed those. What, what do you hope your readers take away from your books? Well, I, I should probably have loftier goals. I should probably be striving for the betterment of the human condition. But mostly, uh, I want them to get done reading the the book and go, "That was great. Where's the next one?" Uh, uh, I, I want people to read my stuff and have a good time reading. Uh, I want them, when they get to the end of the book, I, I want them to be able to go, wow, that was a really fun ride. That was, uh, I want folks to be able to, to escape into my, my fantasy world and to play the little movie in their head while they're reading and have a good time with it. And, uh, uh, and that's pretty much what I'm looking for. I mean, I know I'm writing popcorn, but I'm trying to write the best popcorn you know, that there it's is. Awesome. So. I, I read it. Honestly, when your books came out, if it came out the same time as Harry Potter, I would out automatically go to your book first. I think
reading your books, it's just a bigger world. It's a richer world. For Are me. you kidding? I, I'd I buy, seriously relate to the characters. I'd buy Harry Potter. No, not me. Seriously, I'm not just saying it. I just, honest to God, true. Where do you see your writing going in the future? Like, are there more Harry books coming out? Are you going to finish up with the fantasy series? If if they let me, uh, I'll write about 20 books in the Dresden Files and then uh, finish the whole thing off with a big old apocalyptic trilogy. Who doesn't love apocalyptic trilogies? And uh, uh, I've got uh, I've got uh, 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 another three books in my fantasy series that I'm doing right now. Uh, I've got a science fiction series that I'm I'm itching to write. Uh, I'm still developing enough personal. a personal management skill to be able to do three books a year. Hopefully, one day I'll be able to do that. Right now, it isn't working. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but I've, and I've also got a number of uh, fantasy series. I've got a great big epic fantasy series I want to write one day when I feel I'm a good enough writer to do it. Uh, uh, you know, so hopefully I can write a truly epic series. The Dresden File started off as a class project, and, and now it's this huge thing. It's my main success, and uh, uh, I kind of stumbled over it by accident almost. Uh, so uh, I've just been a little bit lucky and uh, worked pretty hard. And, uh, hopefully I'll just continue to work as hard as I can and maybe get a little bit lucky and keep going in the future. Okay. Um, which character do you think in the Dresden series is the hardest one for you to, to write? Like, who's the hardest mind to get in and out of? Oh, good question. The hardest to get into is almost always Murphy. Karen um, uh, Murphy is a, you know, a female cop. Uh, it's a very different person than I am. Um, I, I'm not especially feminine, uh, perhaps you could tell. Um, and she's always, she was always the, the most difficult for me to get into her head. Uh, uh, the most difficult the person who's most difficult to get out of though is Bob the Skull because once uh, you know once I unleash the snark, you know the, the inner demon of snark that is Bob the Skull, uh, uh, it, it's awfully difficult to, to get my lips under control. And you know after I've got done with it. You know, maybe I really shouldn't be saying that out loud and in public. Oh yeah, I better, I better reel back on Bob. It's, it's always awkward. And um, real fast, we heard that Sharon, your wife, has a book coming out next year. Shannon, my wife. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, do you want to give us a name and release date, little information? Uh, about that? Her first book is called No Regrets. Uh, it'll be out in February. It is a romantic su- suspense book the, it, concerning a, a, a brilliant woman who's being pursued by terrorists because she's the only one smart enough to unlock this information they need. Uh, and a Delta Forces uh, operative who is trying to protect her. Uh, I really think she's going to be bigger in, in romance than I am in fantasy. She's a, she's a brilliant woman and a very talented writer. Excellent, excellent. And last question, just for fun. Does Harry dress left or right? Oh, it depends. Before or after his left hand got horribly burned. Uh, you know, I mean, since then, you know, right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and, uh, and the questions. And-